hello! Welcome back to more personality in the uh, Nikki's village. Apparently we've got to click on this bit of trash here. What kind of lout just throws rubbish on the ground? I'm going to pick it up. It's an old newspaper. Honestly, you think that everyone would know that rubbish goes in the bin? Wait a second, you have to take a look at this article. Well, would you look at that? It seems to be Inspector Chalmer. Ah, look at that. Chalmer hailed as brilliant detective and devoted husband. Oh. No. Chalmer hailed as brilliant detective and devoted husband. Ah, oh. Chalmer celebrates each of special cares with his favourite treats, his wife's cakes. Ah. Oh. Wow, we saw that one coming. He's so gruff that I never imagined he had a soft side like that. <laughs> Just look at that old grunt grinning over his plate of cakes. Knew was buzzing over nothing when he said he ate his cakes back at Reinhold Manor. Huh. Ooh, maybe something happened to his wife and doesn't like cake anymore. That's really too sad to think about. That's right, Luke. He did say that. How very curious. Oh god, has he been switched? The Chelmy claims to dislike all sweets. The scrap of newspaper found claims that his favourite food in the world is sweet potato fritters. That being the case, why did Chelmy fly into such a rage when Matthew brought him sweets at the manor? Ah, is it one of those things where like, robots can't eat certain foods or they malfunction or something? Because I'm still holding my theory that some of these people are robots. Or waxwork droids. Or something. Okay, let's go to Archibald. So, is it true what I'm hearing about the two of you? Are you really searching the village for the Reinhold fortune? That's correct, sir. Currently, we're in search of a close friend of Baron Reinhold's. We believe he has entrusted this friend with an important note. Gracious, that's quite a search you have in your hands. Oh, excuse me, my name is Archibald. Gus, I mean, the Baron and I were great friends, thick as thieves. We used to have the most amazing conversations with late into the night. Do you think that perhaps I am the one you're searching for? Yes, I think so. Well, look, that after all this search, we should bump into you in a place like this. I have one question. Do you recall ever receiving a small note or written message from the Baron? Oh, no, I don't remember ever receiving anything of the sort from Gus. But he did give me a fine desk that once belonged to him. It's at home. Maybe it holds some kind of clue. The Baron's desk, you say? Excellent. Would you like to come over to my house and take a look at it? You are most gracious, if you'd be... Kind enough to allow us a look at it, we would be very grateful. I'm sure Gus wouldn't mind two fine puzzle lovers such as yourselves looking over his desk. Ha! Ah. Actually, let me impart a few pearls of wisdom on you while I've got your attention. Focusing on your case is all well and good, but if you don't solve some puzzles, you'll be sorry later. So make an effort to find puzzles around the village and just solve the ones you, you can. Take around his old timer, it's good to stop and smell the puzzles sometimes. Alright, I got off my high horse now. Let's head on over to my house. Follow me! We solved every puzzle we found because I'm using a guide. This is Gus's old desk. Take all the time you need to examine it. Splendid, Luke. Eh, uh, yeah. Splendid! Luke, let's get right to it. So there's another journal entry. Journal. Jeez. <sighs> journal entry. Not intro. While talking with Guise. Lisa, whatever. In the market, I stumbled upon a newspaper article outlining the inspector's latest collar. As I turned to leave the market, I bumped into a man named Archibald, who claims to be a friend of the Baron's. It turns out that the Baron bequeathed a desk to Team Archibald. I simply can't wait to take a look at it up close. So the doggy made a noise. I think he was pointing at that one there. There's one there as well. There's one over there. And then we completely ignore the desk for now. Look, Professor, there's a hidden puzzle over there. Hidden puzzles! Oh my god, 50 out of 50. Knock knots. In front of you are four tangled limbs of rope. Mark the ones you think will form a knot when you grab them by their ends and pull them taut. Oh my
Not the ones you think will form a knot when you grab them by the ends and pull them taut. So is there multiple ones or is it just one? I think A would be a knot. B would not knot. C looks like it might not. Not. No, it would not. It would not. This isn't fucking Winnie the Pooh. It would not. D might not. It would not. <laughs> it's fucking dumb. It's difficult to work out all the tangles and turns of a rope in one glance. Shall I better look at it? Keep the shape of a simple knot in mind and expect each part of the rope individually. Take a look at rope B. If you start from the right end of the rope and examine the first loop you encounter, you'll notice that the two strands of rope are just lying on top of each other. The same goes for the loop on the other side of the rope. There's no way this rope will knot up. Oh, so B does it not. Did I say B does it not? I think I said B does it not. Oh yeah, B does it not. I think A, C and D might not. Would not. Whatever. On the one of the four ropes will actually not up and pull from both ends rope B is already out. Oh, oh, and the one of them will not. Ah! Real player. Oh, well apparently, um... Mark the ones you think will form or not, so just mark that. I think I've done that right. Well, here's my guess. Yay! I did it! Good job! The one thing you need to do to solve this puzzle is look at it. However, the images themselves are complicated, so it's easy to get confused. confused. It will be fun to test all the various configurations of actual pieces of rope. And apparently there's a robot. Huh. I, I could see straight off that B would it not. But the other ones just look like a mass, massive tangle that, you know. Ooh, the puzzle was no push over. Puzzle was no push over. Puzzle over. Okay, let's look at the desk. Apparently, apparently there's hint coins in this desk. Okay, the only slasher appears to have been left unfinished. Where am I clicking? Oh, I'm clicking there. And down there. <coughs> Bad mate. It's gonna draw. I was thinking it might be a cutscene. It seems to be a note! Right there. It may point us in the direction of the golden apple. What do you make of this X? Huh. I'm afraid I just don't know at the moment. Ooh, to the find the hunt begins is done. Sorry to interrupt you, but I just received a call for you from the innkeeper Be Beatrice. It seems she's concerned about one of her guests and she'd like your thoughts on the problem. Well, we'd best go and help her. Thank you, Archibald. Now off to the inn we go, Luke. Off to the yum we go, off to the yum we go, off and off and off and off and off to the yum we go. Oh, let's just keep going. Usually I would end at the end of a chapter, and the start of a new one, but uh, whatever. Okay, we'll leave. Down. 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 Oh, that's a hink coin. We came all this way for a hink coin. Don't click on the car! Not even a later mobile could make it across the river, huh? But of course, much as I adore the construction, it is just a car after all. Okay. There it is. There's a hint coin. Okay, now we go right. And we go in the inn. In the inn! Ah! Now we tell the Beatrice. Welcome back, Professor. I've been, uh, so looking forward to your return. Thank you. Was there something you wished to discuss with me? Oh my yes, listen to this. One of the guests here just, just performed a do dozen dash routine on me. 
The man's gone and so are all his things. I'd like you to bring him back. I'm a businesswoman after all. How can I run a business with scoundrels ringing out of their bill like this? Would you mind if I looked around the man's room? Please do, but it's all you want. Here, I'll show you in. In the inn. Yuck. Yeah, look at that there. What an absolute pigsty. This whole place stinks of smoke and there's rubbish everywhere. Beatrice, can you describe this guest's appearance for me? Oh, well, I think I might know who it is. Well. Oh, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> he had a sharp moustache and it was pretty clear he wasn't from around here, that was obvious. A moustache reeks of smoke. Oh! Do you suppose you could be talking about Inspector Charlie? <laughs> Inspector Charlie? Isn't he the self important windbag who's been up at Reinhold Manor? No, that's not him. The man who stayed here just looks so much more evil. He was wearing a long trench coat. I'm sure you know the type. Oh, where could he have run off to? Sorry to ask this, Professor, but would you be a darling and find the thief who skipped out on his bill? And then we walk down. Be a darling and find the thief who skipped out on his bill? Honestly, how are we ever going to make progress in our search for the golden apple? Things aren't looking good. No one knows anything about the item in question and we have no leads. I'm beginning to wonder if this golden apple that everyone is in a flap over even exists. Now look, I wouldn't say we're without any leads. Think, my boy, there's a place in St. Mysteria that every villager has wanted to stay away from. What do you mean? The tower, Luke. That creepy looking tower out there. No matter who we ask, no one seems to know a thing about the place. But suppose for a moment that the tower was something to do with the golden apple. Then it follows that the people of St. Mysteria, scared to go near the tower, wouldn't know anything. Of course, we need to investigate that tower. The tower marks the far northern border of St. Mysteria. Let's search the road north of the market for a route to the tower. Now we're going to be starting Chapter 6, the Elusive Tower. Search the village for a path to the tower. Save your progress? Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, finish Chapter 5, start Chapter 6, and I will see you all on next time for more Professor Linton and the Curious Bye-bye.